<laughs> oh, God. All right, there we are. Let's see. All right, so you have to excuse me. I just did this video, and uh, my iPad and my iCloud lost it. So we're going to try again. Sorry for the excuses and the apologies. It just seems to be a continual issue. Let me see about an issue I've needed to learn to just work with and deal with. So, nope, camera angle is still not right. Wait a minute. Hang in there. It's just going to be a minute while we figure this out again. There, that's a little bit better. Okay. So, um, let's see if I recall what I wanted to say. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I went to Michael's because they were having a canvas sale. And I wanted to buy some canvases to start painting this guy. This is Candy Dish, uh, a really inventive um, drag artist out of Providence, Rhode Island. I've had this reference material in my pile of to-dos for about a year and a half. And I put it off and put it off and put it off. Um, I want to feel it. I want to find the right canvas and make it feel correct. So I've been putting it off and putting it off. Also, money is tight, almost, you know, at times. So um, I just haven't done it yet. And I believe there's a reason for it. I went to, which is going to extend to the rest of the video. I went to Michael's to pick up two 5x4 canvases because I want to do a uh, candy dish at 8 feet high, 5 feet wide, two separate videos, uh, two separate canvases rather, top and bottom, um, being on two, se two separate canvases. Um, I just find it more interesting painting on multiple canvases as opposed to one. I just, I don't find that very interesting at all anymore. Uh, you know, I had been painting on one canvas like everyone has, like we were taught to do. And then something happened where I started painting um, the same person, the same figure, the same portrait, but on two different canvases, three different canvases. And I'm sure it'll expand to four, five, six, eight canvases. It'll keep going because I just find it really interesting, the possibilities. And it's not like most, I mean, most of the time the style doesn't change from canvas, separated canvas to separated canvas. It stays about the same. Most of the time, sometimes it does change. But it started with a portrait I did back in 2011, 2012, of my friend Kathy. We were in Times Square. The name of the painting is Waiting. And uh, <laughs> I had made us late to our train going out to Long Island. And we got stuck in a rainstorm. It was just really ridiculous. I wore everything thin uh, because I just love New York and I wanted to be there. So we got stuck in a rainstorm and a lightning storm. It it, the lightning struck the Long Island Railroad um, electrical system, and we got, we got really stuck in New York. So we went to Times Square, and uh, just to get our bearings and get a breath, we went to Starbucks in Times Square, got a cup of coffee, and she's sitting across from me looking at me like, I want to kill you. I love you and I want to kill you at the same time. I said, can I take your picture? And I did. And from that picture came a two canvas, a very large, like six feet across, five feet high, um, double panel portrait of Kathy. And that sparked an idea that is now extended into 2017 and will keep going. And so I went to Michael's the other day to pick up two canvases to do candy dish, again, eight feet high by five feet wide, and I was very excited about it. It looked like I would be renting um, a space uh, that w could accommodate that, and so I was like, I gotta do it, I gotta do it now, or as soon as we move in. Well, that deal <laughs> unexpectedly fell apart. Uh, the woman changed her mind and decided to stay where she is as opposed to renting it out with her high ceilings and all, and so um, I I, I had to negate the idea again. And again, it's for a reason. You know, I'm a little upset, but I'm not too upset because it's for a reason. So I had to negate that. And we're waiting to find out if, if a friend of mine and I can rent another space. But in the meantime, once again, it's recalibrating my ideas. 
And although, you know, I have umpteen paintings going, I am a little bored. I am a little bored of physically painting them just a tad, so I put those to the side. And, but I continue to paint in my head. I continue to paint Candy Dish in my head. I continue to paint my friend Maggie in my head. I continue to paint um, uh, all of my paintings over again in my head. I paint... Um, I dream about painting. When I'm on my scooter, I am painting in my head. I am painting, I am painting, I am painting. I am painting as if I am physically painting so I can get them done in the future. There's a lot of as if thinking that I use. And uh, so I just, I'm continually working, but at the same time that I'm painting in my head and physically painting most of the time, anyway, I, I, I started doing another project. I wanted to send, my, my gallery in Miami has asked me to send small things many, many times. And I keep saying, I don't paint small, I don't paint small. Even though the day I was going to buy Candy Dishes canvas, uh, I went and bought two small paint, two, two small canvases, thinking, I don't paint small, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I ended up doing paint, two, two smaller paintings on them, a girl sitting in a little um, airplane toy on a sidewalk, and then these two girls, uh, uh, two girls together, but uh, their arms around each other, these two young girls, uh, both painted in blues and teals, which was kind of fun and interesting. So I went from, I don't, to, oh look, I do, uh, taking other, sorry, convoluted, other reference material that I had taken and painted to the side and painted in my head over and over again. I put them to the side for probably three, four years. They've been hanging around on bulletin boards like Candy Dish. And I just executed them. I had already painted them, so it only took me four or five hours to, do, to go from, you know, I don't to, oh, yes, I do. I've already done the work in my head, in my many walks, and in my sleep. I've already painted this, so I did. Anywho, um, I have two more canvases, small canvases, ready to go for reference material I've been holding. But in the meantime, I, I started developing smaller work for, for Blue Egg, for my friend Jay Louise. I pulled out some old silkscreen illustrations I had done several years ago in, in Providence, Rhode Island. I was getting ready for two solo shows in New York, and I had built, I had done something like two dozen silkscreen illustrations specifically for the show. But there were a lot of things that didn't really work, like this didn't really work at the time. Well, I pulled out this and several other ones that didn't work, and I've been retooling them. I've held on to them, and I'm thinking, this is ridiculous, but hold on to them anyway. And I've been holding on to them for this particular moment. All these black and whites. <sighs> because, like my painting, over the past few weeks, in this evolution in my head, I, oh, I had, why did I add, never mind, anyway, in this evolution in my, I added something I wasn't supposed to, excuse me, um, in this evolution in my head, I've been transforming these, well, that's going to be an issue, I've been transforming these into uh, color illustrations or color, color works, but with multiple layers. I've been trying to figure this out since 2012. How do I add, oh, that doesn't even go with that. Um, how do I add, how do I make these interesting? So I pulled these out about three weeks ago. Why do I have dots all over the place? Pulled these out three weeks ago and started playing with them. First is just the silk screen illustration adding aerosols to the background. As you can see, aerosols to the background. Some pencil work, some more um, pen work pen and ink work, and then more aerosols in this particular one, in this particular one, and in this particular one, oops, and in this particular one. I'm taking this to this as a small side project, but I'm also realizing it doesn't still, it still doesn't carry quite the depth that I want. So I'm going to pull them out of the frames and start drawing directly once again on the um, on the acetate, or I'm sorry, on the transparency film. And I'll show you what the transparency film is. 
when I was doing silk screen illustrations, uh, one of the one of the first steps to doing silk screening is taking an image and projecting it onto an emulsion. And you know, you can do it with black and white photographs, you can do it with black and white images. But what I did was I drew directly on transparency film. Uh, Just broke something. That was smart of me. Um, all right, transparency film. Uh, you can get it. It's a box. There it is. You can get it at Staples or whatever. Transparency film. It's used for projections, as you can see, but you can draw directly on it using um, uh, a sharpie. That transparency film with the sharpie is taken and it's put on. I, uh, on the table, light is projected through it, and uh, light is projected through to the um, emulsion, and then the, the image is burned into the screen, and that's what you silk screen with. It, it's a little hard to understand unless you've done it, um, but I've been thinking about it and thinking about it, and thinking about this transparency film that I've had in a box sitting to the side for a long time, and I'm like, why am I not using it? Pulled it out and started adding layers to the drawings. Started spray painting not only on the paper, but on the transparency film as well, and adding line work, or I'm starting to add line work. Now this is also, let me see, I've done it with that one, but let me show you something else. I've also just started uh, tracing uh, my friend Maggie. This is my first try at this. Tracing my friend Maggie, who I'm doing a large painting of, because I want to do a multicolored um, experiment or drawing of her uh, to frame and sell to send to Blue Egg. But try it as an experiment, see what happens. And I'm fairly confident that this is going to work out well. I'm using the same principles as I did with, um, as we used in the uh, silk screen illustrations, adding lines that will then, you know, uh, project the image to the viewer, but add, excuse me, eventually adding uh, aerosols. So it becomes more and more and more interesting and has more depth. Because I really love this image of, of Maggie, um, and I don't want to just keep her to the one painting. I want to use her over and over again. I actually want to use her as a model for several pieces. But for this, anyway. Um, and then this brought me back to another project that I started like 12 years ago. Here's the book. I started over 12 years ago. It's a series of children's books called Stories from Scooter Town. And this one is called Run, Rabbit, Run. And it's based on six characters that, or five characters that live in the woods. And this one young man who is playing in his living room with his toys, like an Alice in Wonderland kind of idea, um, playing in his living room with his toys and reading. And um, he's, he's a single child, he's an only child, so he's very much alone, and he builds an imaginary world. But one day he's playing in his living room and he looks under the couch and he finds a whole, a whole community under there of different creatures, with whole characters, with, you know, the whole, um, characteristics of human beings like like we all do we project we project we project but into these into these creatures that you know he finds under his couch he goes on adventures with them he makes friends with them that's scooter by the way my teddy bear who's the mayor of the town there's joel and um jack building up building a wood and paper boat together. So they, they have relationships, they have interactions, and we have conflict and we have resolution in this in this um, town called Scooter Town. Now when I started the book 12 years ago, I had done all these, I'd done endless illustrations on illustration board. And I did them and redid them and redid them. And then I hung the, the final project at that time in a show on Cape Cod, and it was it was pretty well received by the people who actually went in and looked at it. They really they interacted with me. They they 
you know, they talked to me about it, asked me questions, they really liked it. So I took that and I started re-illustrating and re-illustrating. And when I moved to Providence, I made a hand-pulled silkscreen book uh, with my ideas. But I still really wasn't happy with the illustrations at all on any level. But I did it. And I put the book together and um, I sent it to some friends, I showed it to people and got feedback. Not all of it good, so most of it was very good. They liked the idea of it. But the illustrations I wasn't happy with. So I re-illustrated the book again. And now you're hearing, I've really illustrated it probably six, seven, eight times in, in a few years, just over and over and over again, trying to find what I want. But at, um, while I was in Providence, I re-illustrated the book again, 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 and took it to AS220, which are art studios in downtown Providence, really fabulous place, and we did a lithograph edition of the book fully illustrated lithograph edition of the book with my characters, with all my ideas, with the conflict and the resolution, which I love, by the way. I love this last page where there's been this big fight and Jack is the angry rabbit who hides in his hole and then Dixie comes along and pulls him out and they sit and they chat about issues. Anyway, um, you know, we re-illustrated re it again uh, did the lithograph book, I packaged it up, sent it out to publishers, and I got a whole bunch of, God, I love this. I got a couple of phone calls, and really I didn't expect it. I got a couple of phone calls, but I, and I also got emails saying, no, sorry, not at this time. I was also um, completely ignored by a number of people, so it was a lot of rejection. But that hasn't stopped me from, you know, thinking, how can I make this better? How can I make this better? And I'm really excited about... The transparency film idea. It's so funny because I was working on these transparency films and how to make these illustrations better for or use these illustrations and, and be able to offer Blue Egg something a little less expensive and smaller that they can hang on the walls or take to shows, you know, take around to events uh, Jay wants to do. You know, how can I make this better? How can I put these to use? and make them more interesting and make them into something that I find um, a little bit more compelling. By doing that, by giving myself time, by, giving, by putting these aside and giving myself time and letting my mind figure out other issues in painting, I've been able to evolve and, and transform how I paint, how I do black and white ink illustrations, and also how I can add color without it being typical, without it looking like something that people expect, by adding a whole new layer that I have brought up, I have come up with myself. And so I'm really, really excited about this. I was, a little while ago, I took this transparency off of one of my bunny rabbits over there, and I took it and I put it on <laughs> I think I put it on here. I don't know. Just ignore the little dots in the middle of Jimmy's head. Oh no, they're supposed to go with Jimmy. No, they're not. I don't know where they go. Anyway, I took the transparency off of there and I put it on here just to try out the colors. I don't know what the dots are about. I apparently was drawing something. Anyway, um, Look at, look at the depth. It has, it has far more interest now. It is far more compelling now. So I'm able to play with this in a whole new direction. So in the beginning I was upset when I showed on Cape Cod. I was a little disappointed, let's say, that people didn't want to pick it up then. I was disappointed when I did the silkscreen uh, illustrations and showed them to people. And no one picked it up then. I was disappointed when I took the lith sent the lithographs out and nobody wanted the book then. Or they did, but they don't do, you know, picture book anymore, was what I heard over and over again. But it's given me time to rethink my ideas. Like, I can't wait to see... How my little 
the little illustrations I did, you know, now five, four or five years ago, maybe last year, some of them, how these are going to work out now. Oops. That's my squirrel's home. I've been able to evolve and develop something really interesting, and, and um, it was just meant to be. As with my painting, as with candy dish, not being able to do a candy dish immediately means there's something better coming. So I paint as if in my head. I act as if with these and re-illustrate and re-illustrate and re-illustrate for the future artist I will be, for the, for the books that they will be in. And I try not to give up hope, and I guess that's been the point of many of the videos, is trying not to give up hope. While we illustrate and re-illustrate, paint and repaint, paint in my head over and over again. I guess that's been the point of most of these videos, even the ones where I'm crying. Um, is that we just keep working towards the future that we want. And we do this together. So I'm going to get back to work. And uh, yeah, I'm going to get back to work on both stories from Scooter Town and the silkscreen uh, illustrations that are going to have layers in them now, layers of color, and line work, because I'm continuing to draw on the transparency film. And I'm just going to do my best work today. I'm very excited. All right? So that's kind of it. So, let's find the button, shall we? And there it is, and no. Ciao!